Let's go! Is Jalen Milrow starting to fall apart? He lost last week on the road in Vanderbilt, but for the most part, he's been pretty good. Now, a lot of you guys have been victory lapping me because, you know, before the season, I said, I think Jalen Milrow is going to be a good quarterback, but not potentially elite one. Well, you saw in the first half of this South Carolina game, he crumbled in a major way. Now, once again, I'm recording this while the game goes on. Maybe he does turn it around. But you see right here, this was a relatively simple one week one read, one read throw where Jeremy Bernard took care of most of the business after the catch. And you'll see throughout this first half, if you make him work, it can become an issue. Alrighty, so we get to here and Jalen freaking Milro gets lucky. Once again, lock it in on one receiver. South Carolina did a good job adjusting after this. You'll see that they became a lot more aggressive in their coverage. And this honestly is pretty simple. If you see that these guys are bailing out and you know you have your slot receiver going up against a linebacker, all due respect, he did have a high snap to deal with, though. But just based on the leverage of this linebacker, this is not that hard of a throw. You see, he's looking right at number seven. Throw this. That's where you're supposed to throw the football. There's no pressure whatsoever. So Milrow stares down, stares down, stares down, and he does do the right thing instead of just tucking and running. Seven does eventually cut back, but if the safeties weren't so deep right here, he wouldn't have been afforded this opportunity to still be staring him down. And then on the uh, the reroute here from seven, still be able to throw this football upfield, right? So yes, this is... Not great quarterbacking, but it gets bailed out, right? Uh, but that is still good quarterbacking, improvising and actually eventually getting the ball to seven, who does a good job being an athlete, staying on his feet, and Milrow does eventually run it in for a tutty. All right, so we get to this third and nine. Basically, South Carolina just blew up a wide receiver screen and an inside handoff, and Milrow just misses this, okay? You see that there is a middle-of-the-field close safety right here, so you want to take this go shot to Ryan Williams. You'll see that this safety does not allow Ryan Williams to get an outside release, so he decides to just take it inside, and Bill Rowe just misses him, okay? Once again, he did have pressure in his face, so uh, this is not the easiest throw, but this is one that you would like to see Milro make, and he just overshot Ryan Williams, okay, who has just been so unfreaking believably good. Okay, so we get to this third and nine, and we finally get a gutsy play call, okay? Straight zero coverage across the way with two QB spies and a blitzer, okay? Now, this is actually a really well-designed pressure right here. He stops as if he's going to bail, so once that happens, the center... Uh, steps down here on the A-gap right here, and then he has an unabated run right at Milrow through the A-gap, okay? Major protection flaw right here. Then the second thing here is Milrow has to read this as zero, so I would have checked into something quicker here because this is pretty obvious uh, that South Carolina with no safety up over the top. You either want to run like a quick go, quick in-breaker, a screen of some sort, but You'll see that Proctor steps down on this guy, and he actually lets uh, South Carolina, arguably their best defense player, Kennard, have a free run off the edge. So you have two guys basically getting a free run right up the gut uh, here, and man, that is not what you want. That's really, 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 really bad offense all around. And you can see it right here. I mean... He steps down, he steps down. So in a perfect world, what you would want to do, and where I think the mistake actually was made here was on the left guard, right? Because you'll see that 72 steps here, 77 here, 57 here. It should be 52 here and then 74 here and let Kennard run free. Okay, whatever the case may be, the delay of that pressure uh, really made this tough. And then obviously if you're Milrow here, um, you want to run. You you want to work something a little bit quicker, okay? I would have loved this matchup right here with Ryan Williams. This safety has outside leverage on him, and pre-snap, you have to think that zero is not going to be able to get out here on Ryan Williams to help him at all. So Milrow could have gotten out of this as well and just worked this quick out here to the left side. And Williams does a good job cutting off this route. So this could have been thrown for a big gain, but it would have had to have been 
really, really, really quick. Yeah, I mean, this is just abysmal coaching from Alabama. They could not get anything going when it comes to getting their protection to line correctly, okay, especially on these third downs. If this continued to happen, you've got to bring an extra tight end to block or an extra RB to block, or you got to run screens or do something. The fact that you let Kennard have this many free runs at the QB is absolutely insane to me, right? This offensive line cannot pick up stunts, pressures, or anything like that. It's just really, really, really bad coaching uh, from Nick and uh, basically the rest of the Alabama staff, all right? So it looks like they're trying to run mesh, which is a good man beater, but you could see that uh, there's just so much traffic over the middle to run mesh. They had a few guys dropping back into coverage. All right, this is a good job by the left side of this offensive line to get this in down on the ground right here. This was Stewart who decided to go AK-47 on Jackson Dart last week, so that's good. But Milro, you know, Kennard is a really good athlete. It's hard to outrun him, and you had a QB spy behind it. There's just, it's hard. And so you, you'll see here, they decide to slide protection to the left. I don't know if Milro needs to tell Miller that you're now the guy that should block five right here, but he's releasing out on a route. So it's really poor. It really, really, really is poor, and there's just nothing open over this middle, okay? Uh, you know, they got the shallow drag right there, and you're rolling out to the left where there's just no receivers to throw to. This is actually a good job by Milro just to eat this, okay? Okay, so we get to this first and 10, and this is all, all on Jalen Milrow. I mean, this is such bad, bad, bad quarterback play, and this will eventually end up costing him the Heisman, right? Just an overall lack of feel, okay? This is not good. Not, not, not good at all, all right? So, first thing, you could just hit this and live to fight another day. You still have two more timeouts left. I understand wanting to step up and make a play, but, you know, I talk about this often with another dual threat quarterback, Taylor Green with Arkansas, okay? When you roll out to the right or to the left every single time, you're going to run into issues, okay? So what South Carolina likes to do is have a delayed rush from Kennard, right? This is a guy who's been killing him, okay? So he gets a little JoJo on the tight end right here. Uh, to slow the tight end down, and then he's just waiting, right? He's just waiting. So Pritchard leaves uh, Kennard right here, and if you're Jalen Miller, you just got to step up into this. If you step up into this, you might be running for something. I don't know, but this is just an all-time bad situation. Take this sack right here. Don't give ground, and then act like you can get around that, and then you'll see that they probably would have given him forward progress right here, right? But because you go backwards and you then throw the football right here, they're going to get you for the safety, all right, for an intentional grounding. Just really, really, really poor stuff right there. Yeah, this is really, really, really bad coaching and quarterback play. It's third in Brookwood here, okay? 11 seconds left to go. I am just running the football. I really, really, really am. It, you, you, okay, you have no timeouts left, all right? So the thing is, you're probably not going to have time to go up there and kick a field goal, all right? The second thing is, I do not want to run any inbreakers in this spot, right? Because if you get tackled behind the sticks, guess what? You're running out of clock anyway. I'm just running the football. If you pop it, you pop it, and maybe, I don't know. I, I'm just running it to get out of the get out of town. But instead, Alabama decides to actually run a pass play, and Jalen Milrow throws what is really a bad, bad, bad interception. Okay, you could see him get tunnel vision right here to the right side. You notice his helmet is not moving at all. Okay, so he is staring this thing down the entire way. Now I would need an end zone angle to see if he was just staring at this guy, uh, but it looked like it, and. You know, it does look like Bernard was open on this dig right here, okay? Uh, but that was probably this defender getting off of that because, well, the helmet stripe was so locked in, and it's picked off, okay? Now, if you're seven, all right, seven has had his moments, you got to make sure you make this tackle, but he's not able to, okay? Uh, 
and 24 is able to run this to get into field goal range, and South Carolina is able to get a free three points right before the half. Bad coaching decision right there, and also just a bad throw by Milrow. You just can't make that throw, especially if you're a Heisman contender. Okay, so we do get to the second half here. It's third and five. South Carolina takes the 19-14 lead, and it's still one read kind of stuff, but this time Milrow waits for the second window. This actually is a really good defensive call because, you know, he thought about it, right? He really did think about uh, ripping this, and if he did, it would have been lights out. Okay, there would have been two guys there to pick it. He does a good job keeping his eyes down the field and then throwing this second window throw. That's good anticipation right there. So you got to give Milrow a lot of credit for completing that. All right, you're about to see some more bad quarterbacking here from Jalen Milrow, okay? It is third and Hoover here. You're not more than likely going to pick up all these yards. So there is a lot of value in a check down, right? You can kick a longer field goal. You can't kick a field goal from here, right? You don't trust your kicker to make a 49-yarder. Now, Will Reichert bailed Alabama out of a lot of situations because right here is where Milrow in particular has been bad in this extended red zone area. So as a quarterback, you have to know that you have two downs to pick this up. But in order for you to pick it up, you need to hit something to make it a more manageable fourth. Now, if he were to throw this, he would have been tackled immediately. So I could somewhat understand him not throwing this. But what you can also do is understand that if you have a good pocket, you can work backside here and not just force a ball into heavy coverage. Okay? You have all day to throw. And honestly, a sack isn't too bad right here. Okay, but instead you throw a ball into heavy coverage and it does look like that this stop right here was potentially open or this dig right here was a potentially open backside if he would have worked it. Instead, he throws this ball. I mean, in what world is that ever being completed? I'm actually glad from a Bama perspective he airmailed that, right? Just horrible, horrible quarterback play and you have to punt. All right, so Jalen Milrow, once again, locking on to a receiver, okay? This is uh, basically a two-ish man route concept. There's a deep safety right here that you can't see. It's a rollout to the right side, and this honestly is pretty simple, okay? All these guys have to respect the QB run, and Milrow stops, and he's trying to hit this deep ball, and you can see that this dig is open, Right here. Now, it's a difficult throw, but it's one that could have been made. He keeps drifting and then decides to throw it away. That's a good throw away there. All right, so we get to here, and this is the interception right here by Jalen Milrow. This actually is a really, really, really well-designed play on the second and 10, okay? You're uh, running a high-low here on this corner, okay? Ryan Williams, the decoy, it actually gets passed off here. So the corner lets Ryan Williams attack the safety. So the corner is right here. Now, if you're Milrow, you're reading this corner, okay? If this corner drifts, you throw this, okay? If not, you throw the deep over right here, okay? So guess what? The corner is just too far back for me in this situation to throw it. Now, you give the corner a lot of credit. A lot of corners would just be pulled up to this receiver in the flat. So three deserves a lot of credit for making a difficult play. But it does help that Milrow is just staring this thing down. Okay, now he's looking at the receiver. That allows three to peel off here and get in the way right here to go pick this football off. And because you're staring it and you're throwing the football so late, that's a lot, that allows three to come over. So now we get to the second and two. And this is what happens when your quarterback finally gets off his reads, okay? Once again, this is Bama's favorite play. This was the play they scored uh, versus Georgia in the SEC championship game. It's mesh rail. They ran this for a big gain earlier in this game, all right? So your first read is the rail. It's not there, okay? Anyone could read that this rail isn't there. So finally, Milrow works back over the middle, and he hits Ryan Williams over the middle, okay? Now, did he need to get a happy feet in this pocket? No, his pocket was good, but he does roll this way to give himself a better angle to throw this football to Ryan Williams, okay? Bang! That's really, really, really good stuff right there. And you'll see it. Now, once again, I do give him credit for getting off the running back. That is a major pause. Huh? 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 Uh, but 
anybody would have. Now, he does work back here, and man, Ryan Williams is the hook on the mesh rail, okay? So this is your zone answer. That's a good job right there by Milro seeing that this is open. Okay, you'll see that 17 peels off on this mesh receiver, and Williams does a good job staying in this window and giving Milro a place to throw the football. And Milro, man, that's that's really good stuff right there. Give him the credit, all the credit in the world for making. So before the season, I released an Alabama video on why I thought Milro is going to struggle this year. Now, up to this point, he has been by far the best quarterback in the SEC. We'll see what Nussmeyer and Dart do tonight. But I still think up to this point, even with this rough performance, he still is the SEC's QB1. Now, I don't know if they end up winning this game. I'm actually finishing this recording and going on to another game. So we'll see how it plays out here. But man, this guy, ugh, ugh. This was tough, and this was kind of what I expected. His running ability was really key for Alabama to find a way to win, but him locking into receivers will potentially cost Alabama the college football playoff. It is power, our SEC, boom. And tonight we are doing lemon pepper chicken wings. Let's go.